All right, so it is uh, 6.25 in the morning in New Zealand, and my brain isn't completely working yet, so I'm going to do my best to break this down and give my opinion on, on what we saw here. Uh, usually I get up at well, about 7 a.m., and I got up at 4 a.m. today. So, okay. It does appear that they have a breakthrough in solid state batteries, but I'm wording that very specifically. It's, it's a breakthrough in, in solid state technology. But is that something that's in a position to you know, beat everything else that's currently on the market. Well, I didn't get enough information today for me for me to be able to determine that. And this is what I expected going in. It felt like more of a, a marketing thing and promoting their product thing rather than um, actually delivering something or uh, giving us anything substantive. And it's always like that with battery companies. You have to wait in, until you see what they've actually delivered. And even then, you don't always get all the performance metrics. People have to tear down these batteries and um, do testing on them, and uh, th that's how you end up getting the actual information. So what I'll do is I'll walk through their claims and compare that to what's currently on the market. 300 mile range, well, Tesla already hits that. 15 minute charge, I'm going to be releasing a video on that later this week. Uh, 15 minute fast charge is on the cards based on what Tesla unveiled at battery day. Um, from what I've seen, a high loaded silicon anode um, of 20 to 30 percent, it looks like it should be able to hit the charge rates that they were showing today. Um, as I mentioned in my video later this week, I think the reason why they didn't mention this at Battery Day is because of uh, things like the Osborne effect. Um, however, I do think that the charging speed of Tesla's batteries will increase incrementally over the next three to four years as they increase the silicon loading across the entire lineup. And that's not just the 4680 battery cell, that's all the 2170 cells coming out of Giga Nevada. Um, so fast charge, it, it, yeah, it's, it looks like it's going to be comparable to what Tesla's going to have about the same time that they're releasing this battery cell in five to seven years. And I think this is one of the most important things to take away from the presentation that they didn't really talk about that much. They mentioned it, but uh, we're not going to really see these cells in any sort of volume for another five to seven years. And at that point, what else is Tesla going to have? Because generally Tesla, and Elon's mentioned this before, that they consider long term two to three years away. Um, and we're talking four, five, six, seven years away. Uh, sub $30,000. Uh, dollar vehicle. Well, that's on the cards for Tesla. That's clearly on the cards for Tesla based on what they announced at Battery Day. Um, and the reason why I'm references, referencing all this to Tesla Battery Day is because that's a familiar reference point for people. Um, what they've been uh, familiar with the past few months and what I've been talking about for the past year. 12 years calendar life. That's good. Um, you need at least 10 to 15 year calendar life for batteries. Safety? Now this is one place, this is where solid state right now appears to have a massive, massive edge over regular lithium ion batteries. Solid state batteries aren't completely independent, they, they do carry safety risks, but they're much lower than say a, a liquid electrolyte lithium ion battery. I'm just going to look at the comments here. Uh, now I did notice in terms of energy density, that they focused on watt hours per liter instead of watt hours per kilogram. And to me, that's a giveaway that <laughs> the watt hour per kilogram figures may not be the best. Now, that's not my primary concern, but it is telling uh, about their technology. They managed to compress the stack and make it take up a, a smaller amount of space, um, but it may not have excellent. Uh, gravimet gravimetric energy density, which is what matters when you're looking at um, 
uh, vertical takeoff and landing jets. I'm not energy density is energy density is always a concern for me, but it's it's not my main concern. My main concern is always cost. Right now we've gotten the energy density of these batteries up high enough where it's just fine for vehicles. We can give vehicles plenty of range. What we need to do is focus on getting the cost down. Okay, so what else do I have here? The cycle life it was decent, but uh, nowhere near what uh, Tesla's cycle life is. It really depends on the testing conditions, so I, I could be wrong there. But they're looking at 90% uh, from what I could tell from their chart, 90% cycle life after 800 cycles, which let's assume that their line continues at the same slope. That would be about 1600 cycles, which is for solid state, that's great. And once again, to reiterate, for solid state, this uh, this looks like a breakthrough. Um, but there's other technologies out there that uh, are able to provide superior performance in different areas. Uh, every battery technology has positives and negatives. Just because they've released this, it doesn't mean that it's going to mop the floor with everything on the market. First off, uh, if everything they've released is true about the, the cycle life, um, cost, which they didn't even really mention cost, they just said a below a $30,000 vehicle, 15 minute charge, etc. Yeah, it looks really good, but um, even if all that's true, it wouldn't replace all the existing lithium ion battery factories that we have on the planet today. This clearly can't hit, you know, five to 10,000 cycles, which is more what you need for something like energy storage. Probably the best way I could summarize this, um, besides being a breakthrough specifically for solid state, is that it's no compromise of solid state. What was really impressive for me about this presentation is that it doesn't look like they're using additional stack pressure. It doesn't look like they're using um, high temperatures. And uh, they didn't mention anything about putting any liquid electrolyte into a solid state battery. You're thinking, well, what, what's, what's Jordan talking about? Why would there be a liquid electrolyte in a solid state battery? Well, uh, the first question you've got to ask when any, whenever anybody makes a solid state battery is uh, how much liquid electrolyte they put into it. Because a lot of times that's a trick a company will use in order to make the solid state battery work and it defeats the purpose of having a solid state battery in the first place. So it, it looks like they've gotten around all the tricks that are usually required to make a solid state battery work, which are adding a few drops of liquid electrolyte, stack pressure, and temperature. Um, I, I can't put a lot of stock in what um, JB said, because he was choosing his words very carefully. He focused on the watt hours per liter instead of, uh, instead of the watt hours per kilogram. He did mention that it ha would have good recyclability, but I, I imagine he hasn't even had a chance to try to recycle um, one of these cells. And as we know, everything works in PowerPoint. Uh, hopefully it is very recyclable. Oh, and he um, one of the things he mentioned that is is that uh, anode, uh, graphite anode, is more difficult to recycle. That's true, but there's other people who are saying that that's actually a solved problem, and they think they're they're going to be able to uh, uh, recycle those anode materials. Um, eliminating the formation step. That, now that was a good insight for me. If they're able to eliminate formation, that would be excellent. That that's Formation costs and formation equipment are one of the most expensive parts of the battery manufacturing process. But once again, they didn't really give us any cost targets. So it, it's hard to know where that formation fits in. Okay, somebody's saying it's all good, so I'll just go ahead and continue. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump into the questions that you guys have because I feel like I've covered, covered this off pretty well. It's... Um, it reminds me of the mission accomplished banner <laughs> um, uh, that George Bush st stood in front of after uh, we uh, after things 
were after the war was finished in Iraq, uh, or he thought it was finished. Uh, okay, so they have something that's a breakthrough. Now the difficult part is bringing that to market, which is that's where most of your difficulties are going to be. So I, I'm going to go into answering the questions. All right, you guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I imagine I need to spend some more time processing this, and you probably need some more need to spend more time processing this. I'll, I'll talk to other battery researchers I know and find out if there's anything I missed. Um, looks like there's a breakthrough, but I mean, we might not see it for another five to seven years. Now, I can't describe their breakthrough in one sentence because they didn't really tell us what their breakthrough was. <laughs> I mean, um, how can I summarize this? I would say this is a breakthrough in solid state but there's other competing technologies out there that are able to do similar things. This puts us on the path of um, a commercially viable lithium ion battery. That's probably the best way to put it. If, if everything they said today was true, this puts us on the path of a commercially viable solid state battery, but we're gonna, not gonna see that battery for another five to seven years. And by that point, they better have improvements in the, in the hopper and ready to go because uh, what they unveiled today is just competitive with what uh, Tesla unveiled at Battery Day. I think that's a good soundbite. Oh God, thanks. <laughs> um, Halter Ferguson Financial, thank you very much. Oh man, I would love to get into other Tesla patents like uh, power steering, wiring, etc. I just realized that uh, I'm coming up on the one year anniversary of the channel. I started the channel in, on the 6th of January last year. And I've spent all of that time focused on Tesla Battery Day. So uh, it looks like we have a couple more months of covering off Tesla Battery Day. Uh, after that, then we can start moving on to other things, but I imagine I'll still be focused on batteries for a while. That's kind of become my niche. Yeah, it looks like that, well, the company should have revenue starting like 2024, 2025, but they uh, they probably won't be profitable until later in the 2020s. Yeah, they, uh, the qu with regards to the questions in terms of their roadmap, in terms of production, that's all publicly available on their website, so I don't need to speculate on that. They're saying they're gonna start production at I think 10 to 20 gigawatt hours in 2024 to 2025 and scale to something like 100 gigawatt hours in 2027. That's if everything goes smoothly. And J.B. Straubel did make a good point where we are reaching the limits of what conventional lithium ion can do. But as Elon said, and this is one thing I noticed at the beginning of the presentation, they were capping a silicon graphite anode at something like 320 to 325 watt hours per kilogram. Elon sees a path to 400 watt hours per kilogram. And if they go pure silicon sometime for, further down the road, they might be able to squeeze out, out even higher. Uh, I think we can solidly get 400 watt hours per kilogram out of existing um, out of the technology that Tesla unveiled at Battery Day, um, if they're able to continue iterating on it. I could be wrong about that, but we still have quite a bit of runway. In terms of safety, now this is a really good point. Yes, solid state um, inherently is safer. However, there are other technologies like Soteria current collectors, which were, uh, has also been covered in research papers where the battery effectively shorts itself out um, safely and it does so in a non-flammable way and I expect to see that 
coming to market within the next two to three years. I need to get the CEO of Soteria back on the channel. If you're curious about that technology, uh, check out the limiting factor too. There's uh, a great interview there talking about technology. It's one of those things like the tabless electrode where it's like, why didn't anybody think of this before? Or why didn't anybody do it before? I appreciate everybody joining me this morning and uh, sharing the event with me. In the short term, this doesn't have any implications for Tesla. In the next five years, no implications for Tesla. So if you're a Tesla shareholder, don't worry about it. Um, longer term, this may allow further cost reductions and energy density improvements if they can improve on what they unveiled today. This is, this is a first step in solid state. Sorry, that's my alarm. Usually this is the time I'm getting up. <laughs> Anyways, have a good day. Thanks for joining me.